This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. For animal lovers, by animal lovers. Take a look at this gorgeous leopard gecko here. This happens to be a tangerine version, and these guys have just become an obsession of mine, and certainly are one of the most widely kept pet reptiles out there. There's so much diversity to them, and their ease of care is so incredible. That's what we'll be talking about today. What incredible animals. My name is Brian Bartrek. I'm no zoologist, just a guy with a passion for animals. And that passion often takes me on animal adventures around the world. This week, I'm at my home base of BHB Reptiles, highlighting leopard geckos. You're watching Snake Bites. Leopard geckos certainly are one of the most widely kept pet reptiles on the planet, and for good reason. This happens to be a bell albino. Believe it or not, there's three different strains of albinos and leopard geckos, and none of them are compatible with one another. But we're going to talk about mutations a little later in the show. Right now, let's step back and just talk about leopard geckos. Their scientific name is actually Eublepharus macularis, and it was actually named in 1854 by a scientist named Edward Blyth. Now it comes from the Greek word you for good and blepher for eyelid because they have these beautiful eyelids that really set them apart from some of the other gecko species. Now macularis actually just means spot, which let me find a normal leopard gecko here and that's basically what it's named as, is the spotting on their back. They're really super easy animals to care for and I want to get into the husbandry before we start talking about color mutations. Hey guys, you may not know, but I'm running a crowdfunding campaign over on Kickstarter to take back wildlife TV shows like they used to be when we grew up. I'm just so sick of the sensational and fake crap that we're seeing all the time. So hopefully you can help me by clicking on this link right up here and donate so that I can go to South Africa and produce one of the coolest wildlife docs that's educational entertainment and a ton of fun. I hope you guys will help me out. One of the things that make leopard geckos so easy to keep as pets is their simplicity of care. One of the cool things is, is that they don't need a UVB light bulb like most lizards do. So you can actually keep them in rack systems just like this. Now, in the wild, leopard geckos are solitary animals and pretty much live completely on their own and only come together during the breeding season. So a cage like this is actually perfect because Although they're a nocturnal animal, during the day they're going to spend the majority of their time in little caves like this in the desert areas. So this is kind of the perfect environment for an animal like a leopard gecko. Now we actually keep them in groups of up to four or five females together during the breeding season, which is completely fine. They thrive 100% that way. But in the wild, they're going to be completely solitary. <laughs> you definitely don't want to keep two males together because they will completely fight for dominance. So let's just go ahead and talk about husbandry and how simple they actually are. This is all you really need to keep them. We just basically keep paper towel on the bottom and of course we clean it whenever it gets dirty and sometimes we'll spray it down a little bit just for humidity's sake. We have a nice hide box in here and they love it. Again, they want to have that seclusion. And then the only other things that we have here are a clean water bowl. Although to be honest with you, I know a lot of people that keep leopard geckos that don't keep water in them whatsoever. But again, we always do just because that's how we keep things. And then the coolest thing about leopard geckos to me is the fact that they're insectivores. So they're going to eat mealworms, superworms, roaches, and even crickets. But I keep mine exclusively on mealworms, these guys right here, which makes it super simple because you don't have to worry about chasing bugs around or those annoying crickets. Although it's completely fine to feed them crickets as well as roaches. But we just put some mealworms in here and the most important thing is going to be the fact that they need to be dusted with both calcium and D3 powder. So a nice multivitamin, that's going to keep them really healthy, especially during the breeding season when we'll actually increase both D3 and calcium powder to them so that they can produce potentially a lot of eggs for us. And that's basically it guys. Now if you're keeping them as a pet, you can certainly keep them in a 10 gallon or a 20 gallon aquarium with a really simple setup just like this and it works fine. Now when we're keeping them as breeders, we actually put moist nest box in with them as well so that they can lay their eggs. And we keep either coconut husk or eco earth, something on that that's damp, about two or three inches in a shoe box with a hole in it and it works out perfect. So again, you can see how cool and simple keeping a leopard gecko actually is. 
So guys, we're gonna do an entire show on breeding leopard geckos within the next month because our stuff is gonna be coming out of hibernation. So we're gonna give you a step-by-step -step of how we do it, but that's gonna be about a month from now. Right now, I just wanna get into some cool looking leopard geckos, talk about mutations in the morphs, and take a look at this little guy right here. This happens to be a super snow tremper white and yellow. Now that's a lot of mutations going on here. And the super snow is actually, obviously, the super version of a mass snow. The white and yellow happens to be a dominant, which is a color mutation, and of course the tremper is an albino, and that just makes for one spectacular animal. This is just a normal wild type leopard gecko. As you can see, they're beautiful animals even when there isn't a color mutation. Of course, they're extremely polymorphic, meaning that almost every leopard gecko has a little bit different spots. Leopard geckos are what they call crepuscular, which means that they spend the majority, if not all of their life, continuously on the ground. These guys will live in little caves and dens all throughout the rocky and desert areas of Pakistan and northern India. Of course, this enormously fat tail really aids in two different areas. It retains fat and moisture so that they can go long periods of time without food or water. It's also a defense mechanism. When a predator comes and grabs it, they actually will drop that tail and just come right away from it. It's a way to defend themselves. They can regenerate the tail, but a regenerated tail doesn't look nearly as beautiful as a natural tail. I've always liked the Max Snows. They're one of the first mutations of leopard geckos that were actually produced by John Mack. It's a co-dominant mutation, of course, with the super form being a super Max Snow, which is really a gorgeous animal. This is a bold Max Snow. The bold stripe is a polygenic trait that's bred for that beautiful striping, and of course, the Max Snow is co-dominant. Here's an example of a dark Mac Snow, but just like when you can breed a hypo polygenically to reduce the amount of black pigmentation, this is the example of the opposite direction, where we're trying to breed for more black pigmentation, making this really cool looking animal. This is a rainbow striped leopard gecko, and of course it's named because of that cool stripe with all those amazing colors. This is a polygenic trait. Now this one is actually a really cool animal, and wow, look at how beautiful that is. It's got so much tangerine to it. This happens to be a tangerine tremper albino, but it's a marble eye. Now there's a lot of eye pigmentation going on in leopard geckos, like the eclipse. The marble eye is something completely different than the eclipse, and it really makes the eye pigmentation really bizarre, and it also changes the color a little bit of the patterning, so it's kind of neat, but this is one gorgeous animal, and <laughs> he's a little squirmy monkey too. This is a hypo tangerine marble eye. The marble eye is a recessive mutation that causes eye pigmentation. As you can see in this animal, the eyes are pretty wacky. The hypo eclipse is a combination between a hypo leopard gecko and an eclipse leopard gecko. The eclipse is a recessive mutation that causes the eye pigmentation. This little guy has a lot going on. It's a bold snow, white and yellow eclipse. That's right, the bold pattern is a polygenic trait. Max snow is co-dominant, the eclipse is recessive, and of course the white and yellow is dominant. That's one cool animal. This is a bell sun glow. The hypo is what causes it to be a sun glow, which is a polygenic trait bred specifically to take away the pattern. And of course the bell albino is a type of albino that's recessive mutation. This is a Tremper Albino Murphy's Patternless, a double recessive mutation. Both the Murphy's Patternless and the Tremper Albino are both recessive, and this guy is one feisty little bugger. Here we have an Aptor, which is a Tremper Albino Patternless Orange Leopard Gecko. This is a Bold Snow Tremper Albino, so it has the Bold Polygenic, the Max Snow Codominant, and the Recessive Tremper. Here's a Snow Tremper Jungle White and Yellow. So it has the Max Snow, the Tremper Albino. The Jungle Pattern is that really interesting pattern down its back. And of course, it's a White and Yellow. What a gorgeous animal. What we have here is a beautiful Hypo Leopard Gecko, which is a polygenic trait, which means that it's bred specifically for reduced amount of melanin or that speckling. Of course, you can see here that the back is almost completely void of speckles. There's actually a Super Hypo Leopard Gecko as well that even has less dots as this, and then there's even a bald version that has no head pattern. Here's a Max Snow Tremper White and Yellow. It's a cool combination of three really cool genes, a dominant, a co-dominant, and a recessive. 
This is a Max Snow Tremper Albino. The Max Snow being codominant and the Tremper Albino being recessive. And as you can see, the Albino Leopard Geckos typically have sensitive eyes and oftentimes in bright lights like this will keep them closed. This is just a pure bell albino or recessive mutation, again with three types of albinos that are not compatible with one another. This is the bell albino. What's interesting is if you breed any of the albinos together, you'll get normal looking babies, but it's really frowned upon in the leopard gecko community because you want to know exactly what strain of albino that you're working with. So this is the third strain of albino. This happens to be the rainwater or Vegas strain of albino. And they're all a little bit different. I kind of think I like the bell and the rainwater a little better than the tremper, but they're all beautiful. And this happens to be what they call a raining rainwater, which has that really cool purple striping down their back. And what's cool about this guy is he's a little bit of a male, and I wanted to show you how you can sex these guys out. First off, you're gonna have these really big femoral pores right by the cloaca, and then it of course, you're going to have these bulges right here. That's going to say that it's a male. And uh, they're pretty easy to sex. And of course, with temperature sex determination with incubation, you can actually incubate eggs specifically for male or female for the most part. But this guy here is actually the first stuff that I have in the Rainwater Albino line. So I'm excited to be working with him. <laughs> he is just quite a little beauty. This is a Sunglow Bell. The Bell Albino is another strain of albino that's not compatible with the Rainwater Vegas or the Tremper Albino. The Sunglow is always when you combine albino and hypomelanistic. And again, you can see that the albinos like to keep their eyes closed in bright lights. Here's a stunning Snow Hypo White and Yellow. Those three combinations make for one beautiful animal. Here's a Tangerine Enigma. The Tangerine is polygenic and the Enigma is a dominant gene that does both color and pattern. Unfortunately, there's some neurological issues with some of the Enigmas, so we're not reproducing very many of them, but boy, do they make beautiful animals. Reverse stripe leopard geckos are bred just for what they look, a reverse stripe down the dorsal pattern. Look at this beauty. This is a Max No Enigma. The Max No being co-dominant and the Enigma being dominant. This is a Max Super Snow, and it's a beautiful animal with those lateral stripes. This is a super version of breeding two Max Snows together. Of course, you'll get a 25% chance on average of hitting a super form. This is a combination of a Max Snow and a white and yellow. Of course, the Max Snow being co-dominant and the white and yellow being dominant. Here's a Murphy's Patternless. The Murphy's Patternless is a recessive mutation. There are also patternless leopard geckos that are line bred or polygenic, but the Murphy's Patternless is 100% recessive. This is a patternless stripe white and yellow. The patternless stripe is actually a line bred or polygenic trait, and the white and yellow is a dominant trait, but ironically enough, the paddy stripe is somewhat linked to the eclipse gene, which is recessive, which causes eye pigmentation. Whew, this is a stunning example of what white and yellows can do. Just look at the color on that animal. Again, white and yellows are dominant, and man, I just love this animal. This is a beautiful hypo white and yellow. Here's a white and yellow marble eye. So the white and yellow is dominant and the marble eye is recessive, making that quite goofy looking cross-eyed look to this leopard gecko. The tangerine leopard gecko is a polygenic trait, which is basically breeding specific coloration in a leopard gecko. Each generation, when you breed the orange animals together, they're just gonna continue to get more and more orange. I just love this color in this animal and look at the tail on it. This is a hypo carrot tail. Now this is an interesting animal in the sense that these were some of the early pioneered polygenic traits. The hypo being a line bred trait that reduces the black pigmentation and then you start to see the orange in the tail of a carrot tail. Now breeding two carrot tails together will start to get more and more orange Hence, that's where the tangerine leopard geckos came from. So this is the very beginning of the tangerine leopard gecko. This is a hypo max snow, combining a polygenic hypo and a co-dominant max snow. 
Look at the eyes on this little guy here. This is a Hypo Eclipse White and Yellow, and these have some solid jet black eyes. Man, that is cool. One of the reasons that leopard geckos are so easy to produce in designer paint jobs is the fact that they have two eggs per clutch and can have up to six to eight clutches per year. And you can raise a female up in eight to 10 months. So literally you can be producing baby leopard geckos from a mom that's only one year old, meaning that you can move along these projects relatively quickly. And that's why there's so many polygenic, co-dominant and recessive mutations and so many amazing paint jobs. Whew. Take a look at that little monkey right there. This happens to be a hypo white and yellow. Now the hypo gene is a polygenic gene that basically just means that you're going to be breeding for less amount of pigment and we talked about it earlier in the show and of course the white and yellow gene just like we talked about is a dominant gene that causes interesting color and as you can see just the really bizarre coloring that this has over a normal hypo leopard gecko. I tell you I'm not even working with a fraction of the leopard gecko mutations that are out there and you can see how many cool animals we have. It's going to be so interesting over the next 10 or 12 years to see all the amazing paint jobs that are coming out with these leopard geckos. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be doing some shows on breeding and some more in-depth things with these guys because I tell you, I've completely fallen in love with them and I hope you have too. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I sure do love these little guys. And as always, I was Facebooking, tweeting, and Instagramming my way through it. So make sure to follow me over at SnakeBitesTV and on Instagram at SnakeBites.TV. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. Hi, I'm Peter Birch, an Aussie bloke who loves wildlife. My respect for nature started when I was a young boy in rural New South Wales. Since then, it's exploded into an obsession. New episodes only on Animal Bites TV.